wanting to share you with our Jacksonville audience. So can you please first describe yourself and your background for for us tonight? Um, I am an interdisciplinary artist. I think that uh, I try to use um, my artwork in order to elevate the space that I think that I've coined as the universal language. Um, I think that as I think of myself, I think it's more that I'm transporting um, space um, and I'm trying to transfigure what it means to think about uh, what it means to be a human today and um, articulate our language from the past, the present, and what it might look like in the future. How has your style changed or evolved from like your first painting? What do you feel like you do now differently? That's such a great question. I think that as I um, am thinking about space, I'm thinking about the material that I'm being given. I think it's evolved from my first residency at ACA. Um, most of my material was canvas and my canvas didn't come in time. So I had to think about and reconsider how I was going to interpret the materials that I had, which was only paint and a wall. So I started to paint on the wall. That's how I started painting on the wall, basically out of necessity. And when I painted on the wall, I started to feel like the lines started to speak louder. So there's this interplay between, I think, finding the voice within this language that I'm creating and how it can speak for, the, for those who are silenced. Um, I think that art can be a bridge, it can be a unifier. And what I think through time I have done was I think for the first couple of years was really perfecting the craft of material, understanding how paint worked, the chemistry, when it hit canvas, what happened, how I could optimize and make sure that every moment that I'm spending with this texture, that I'm working like the color field artist. I'm trying to make sure that that mark matters. I'm trying to make sure that that gesture really has that emotion, that it's taking you to that space of... Um, of intentionality, but also driving home a message that most times you don't know who did this work. So I think the sweet spot of my artwork always is when you look at it, making it look like you did not put the work in. Um, whether I spend or pour 10 to 15 to 100 hours in the work, the key is making it look as if it's bonded together. And I think that that is the echo of humanity. I think how we all interact with each other best is when we can actually find that common place, that common zone. So I think my artwork has evolved from materiality to finding a real passion and purpose behind it that has connectivity of humanity. So you named um, this installation Embed, The Approach. So where does that name come from? So I'm really um, looking back at, um, you know, my uh, grandfather, he was an upholster. So a lot of what he I'd be remiss if I also didn't thank a lot of my family who's here. Um, I have family that lives here, family that traveled from here, and I want to make sure that all of you feel embraced, and I'm so appreciative that you're here, and I feel you, and I'm always so glad because I come from such a robust family of artists, um, but my grandfather was an upholster, my dad and my, my, my uncle, they're engineers, um, so they're makers, and the way that they think about creating is differently and interpreted differently, and though they're given the name upholster engineer, they're really the first artist, right? They're building, they're creating bridges, they're figuring out different ways in order to um, push forward humanity in their own way. And I think to answer your question, how I'm able to think about my artwork in furtherance of 
delving into the material, the, the space in which I think that you start to move into the metaphysics of space and time and how these things tie together through materiality, pushing forward, almost thinking about how are you going to push your space in the renaissance of this space right here and right now? I think far too often we wake up every morning and we just start our day. We're not thinking about how we're furthering humanity, how we're furthering humanity, how we're taking what we have around us to uplift others and to whisper or maybe even inherit some of these ancestral words from our ancestors. But um, I think I'm very tied back to my ancestors. So embed is really about taking this material thread and digging it deeper, taking it into and piercing these paintings. Um, there's only so deep you can go into fabric with even staining it. How can you then uplift the piece and push something through and find the rhythm of a thread that then pierces in and out. And then instead of just looking at the negative space and the positive space, I'm now able to build something that then has a different textural element. And um, instead of taking an, a piece and just looking at it from one perspective, the approach is really an echo of what you're attempting to do, bring community into the space. What you're trying to do is bring someone closer. These pieces all, though created, and you can look at from a distance, something very special happens when you move closer to them, when you actually approach them, when you converse with them, when you see that special, magical tingle that was etched inside of it. And I think, again, that echoes to humanity. I think that each person that we see, um, we have a choice. We can look at them in the face or we can walk right past them. We can say hello, we can dig deeper, we can face what might be a challenge or we can avoid it. And I think that through time and space, it's all about where I think we intermingle, where we can find our best selves, our best, our best place, and be a vessel and a conduit of hope and love and be able to inspire kindness and humanitarianism. And you talked about like the materials that you used, and yeah, I see like this process, but I also wanted to mention, like, let's talk about like this big kind of stainless steel picture that we have. The, um, the unnamed now piece that we have in the gallery. And you use that and made that out of steel. And one of the artists kind of brought up like, okay, well, how did you design this? How was it made? Because he didn't see any kind of like the forged pieces to it. So how did you like switch from that material into this material? So um, when I went to Egypt, one of the most inspiring trips I went on, I was able to see uh, I was able to look at how tombs were preserved and I was able to look at a different language that our people were creating um, in a different space and time. And then I started to think, how are we able to take this language, this space, this form, and transform through, again, the metaphysics of time and space and create these sculptures that could almost have these elements that you can almost feel yourself through. So it, when I created this piece, it's really not about the piece. It's really more about the shadows. It's about how you can interact within that space. It's how... Um, you feel that presence that I got to feel. I wanted to share that moment, that memory. And again, it's really cha channeling, I think, our ancestors. I'm constantly um, trying to find a space where I'm intermingling with, you know, what is it that my great, 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 great grandmother would have whispered to me? What is the wisdom that she would have shared with us? And some of those 
ancestors are lost in history. And I think the only way that you can retell these stories sometimes is through an art form that then becomes a hieroglyph of sorts. So some people may feel that language. Some people may feel the entangling of geometric form. Whatever it is to you is, I think, what's the most important. I think that when you approach any of these pieces, it really is the intent for you to take away that there is a, a meditative space that you can go into. And how can you take from that meditative space and become maybe a better person? Mm -hmm. I believe that within the power of art that it inherently entangles a message of love. Okay. Very similar to the music that was being played, the cello. I mean, what a talent. Yeah. I think that very similarly music, you hear these notes that do something spiritually and then you bond mm. to that memory and that memory stains you. Yeah. And in bed, the approach, the idea is that this work is really so many different mediums, so many different places that I'm taking all of these are these these materials from. And then how do I transition this material in order to make art that I believe can change the narrative of your story? And I think that's why art making is so important. I think that it not only tells a contemporary narrative, it gives homage to what happened before during and what we are passing on to humanity after us. What does civilization look 100, 1,000 years from now? What are we giving them to make sure that they manifest a good space? What does it mean for us to preserve being a maker and not getting so tied up with AI? What does it mean for us to think about how artists are really transitioned into being these people who can change humanity and who can drive a different narrative that can build us hope. And, you know, we're in a, we're in a very interesting place in humanity right now. And I think we have to really question and be careful about how much we over rely on technology because that's not making, that's not us, it's not humanity. And I think that as we look to the future, it's now that we have to, I mean, I'm in my 40s. I'm not going to tell you my exact age. <laughs> but I'm going to give, give you a, a little glimpse. Um, I grew up with cassettes and CD players and a big Apple. I mean, not an Apple flat. I mean one that looked like a box that actually had a disc that you slid something into. And these were remnants of things that you can, tangible items that were manifesting different people's dreams and hopes. And I think that we can't, we, I think, have to come together as a community to preserve these things. I think it's very important. So when you, go into a gallery or you go into the museum, these are us. These are pieces that are very sacred to who we were and what we're leaving behind. So, you know, you talked about like the importance of humanity and like what we're learning, you know, in this state and like AI, like, you know, being careful of technology coming down the way. I did want to ask like, so who are your influences? Who are the people or like what, I guess, art or subject matters influence you now? And how do you feel about their influence on your work? Such a great question. So I'm going to start with God bless my mentor, Radcliffe Bailey, um, who recently passed. He was an amazing artist and a mentor to me. Um, his work was not only bold and strong and unapologetically um, addressing African-American diaspora, but it was just brilliant work that I think continued to sow that seed of enriching humanity. Um, Mark Bradford, who is um, 
not only a mentor of mine, but I think the most brilliant artist living today. Um, his artwork, um, I recently got to spend some time with him in New York, and I think what's important about what he's doing in his artwork and how he's taking from the urban landscape in LA and figuring out ways that it's embedded inside of his artwork and the magnificent work he's doing always uplifts me. But then there's the poetry of Maya Angelou and um, each and every single one of my family members that are here, um, they inspire me every day. They uplift me, um, my husband, my boys, um, I have two little boys, Lexington and Senko, who are a challenge but a gift at the same time. Um, they are amazing, but these are the things that inspire me and keep me going and uplifted every day. So even though you are not from Jacksonville, I know you have a strong opinion of our city. So have you always felt welcome or have there been any incidents that you would like to share with us about Jacksonville? That's a tricky question. <laughs> I think that Jacksonville has such a unique and interesting history. I think that um, there is so much to experience here. There's so much beauty. There's so much love. There's so much community. I think that um, the community here is not only talented, but I have never had such amazing food in Florida. I'm gonna, uh, I gotta go there. I think I've gained about 10 pounds since I've been here. Um, but I think the dynamics of talent is so real. I think that there is such an elevation of support in this community, especially the art community, that is um, authentic. Um, I think that there's work to be done, just like there is work to be done in so many different places. I think uh, being born in New York and coming to, you know, um, being raised in South Florida, you think that, you know, that Florida is Florida, but Florida has so many different um, elements. And I think that one of the things that I've gained from Jacksonville is the love of your community. And I'm so grateful for that. I think I also learned from the love of yourself and Roosevelt and watching um, this very strong woman love her husband, who's an artist, who I always feel bad for anyone who's in love with an artist. <laughs> God bless all of them. But um, this love is a gift to all of us because I think watching your exchange and your ability to not just uplift him, but the community and figuring out a way to create a space for all of us has been such a wonderful gift. Yeah, it is a struggle, but we do what we can do. <laughs> so you've had a chance to like showcase your art, I think like all over the world. So what have been some of your favorite commissions or some of the people who you work with in the past? I think that um, my favorite one is one that I'm working on right now, The Courageous 12. This is um, 12 men that integrated police officers. And there's one officer named Leon who is alive and being able to share his stories and to understand things that we enjoy, like not being segregated and um, what it looks like to be able to drive up certain streets that he wasn't allowed to drive up and to take on what it means to build a monument that is going to really reflect a very tough time in history, but to be able to really give him homage and to celebrate all that he's been through and to tell these stories that can enrich our future, our sons and other people, and to be able to position that story and the narrative that really is going to help people redefine what it means to go through struggles. 
and I think reinterpret it through art. And this piece is going, we just, um, after two years, we're just now getting it approved with city council. And um, I really, again, um, one of the other pieces I really loved working on is in Egypt. I really enjoyed being there and um, sharing space with what it means to build a monument and how to look and reinterpret monuments. Um, I think that these pieces, some of them that I got um, are from Mali and um, these pieces I think inherently are carrying the spirit of a tribe and taking the spirit that was made by black males and taking and putting a feminine touch on it and reinterpreting by putting not just paint, but pushing thread in between and maneuvering what it means to think about a pattern and reinforcing different patterns and redirecting that pattern. And I think how we think about and meander with each other and pulling these spirits and energies and trying to make sure that we are um, always trying to take artwork and using it in a manner that can uplift and redefine. So how has being a part of this residency different from other residencies that you've maybe participated in? I think like when I came, like when me and Roosevelt came to see you, we were doing a residency there at the Ringling Museum. And so that kind of got me, I think, really inspired like for our residency here. And so like, you know, like, like how did we treat you? <laughs> I love that. That, that is, I think, um, why I think you're so special. I think that you don't only investigate, but Shawana came and visited me at the Ringling. That was another really special installation that we did at the Ringling Museum. They put us, myself, my husband, and my kids, we got to stay on the campus at the museum. And we travel a lot. So one of the ongoing jokes that we have in my family is my son say, we want to go back to the museum house. <laughs> and I'm like, baby, we can't go back there. But it was such an amazing experience to be able to do that residency because every day, I think all artists need a residency because you become kind of a slave to your medium if you're not careful. And what a residency helps you to do is to take a step back. It helps you to rethink what it means, what you're doing, what you're creating, and repositioning, I think, your messaging and making sure that you're growing, making sure that you are doing well by your medium. For instance, in this particular residency, I've always stitched, I've always quilted, I've always sewn, but I got to really delve deeper into that in this particular residency. Um, I think what was different about this residency is that you allowed us the flexibility of a different space. You also um, had a lot of trust and did not micromanage, which was really nice. Yeah. Um, and you also gave us the funding to be able to take care of what we needed, yeah. which is a gift as well. Um, I think that in every residency, of course, you have funding, but in this particular residency, you got us a really nice yeah. chunk of change. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll give you credit for that because I think, look, people don't understand that as artists that you know, a part of how we survive is by being valued for what we do. And um, what we do is so special because this is what is going to be remembered. This is what's going to be passed on. And I think that not only are we putting our hearts on the line, but we're really putting our lives on the line. And I think that whenever you have an artist who is practice, whose practice is as intense as ours is, and I say ours because it's not just mine, it's my entire family. This is a group effort. I could never do this by myself, ever. Um, it, I, whenever I even talk about the work, it's us, because it takes a group of us, a team of us, in order to realize what starts as a thought. That thought, then you have to manifest it. And it's, I think, 
people are like looking at a sculpture and they're like, how did this happen? And it happened because of manifestation. So you dream these things and then you push it through to reality. And that is where I think very similarly, all of us are artists, every single one of us. It's just about really manifesting our destiny. Mine is a clear output. Others may be teaching a child. Others may be reaching out and helping a homeless person. Whatever it is, it always has to, I think, be thinking about the greater good of civilization. And I think that there's an echo chamber when I think about my artwork because it's really, I think, the pattern of the universal language, one in which we can all embrace and gift each other a pattern of life that threads each other, the, the human thread, and how we're all entangled, how we're all connected, how we're all intertwined, and how we're all better together. I think you pretty much kind of answered my last question, but you know, as we're coming to the end of this artist talk, and I just want to you know, have you all kind of go back into the gallery and look again, but what do you want these viewers to take away from visiting your installation? I would love everyone to take away that life is a gift and that each moment that we have is precious. And each of these pieces, I believe I'm putting my life on the line. Each moment I take so seriously because I think that this universal language that we have is a gift. In the, blink of a line, in the blink of an eye, anything can happen to any single person. And I think that in each moment that we have, we can take it and we can interpret it going left or right. Each angle is equivalent to each moment that we have. How we can all interact better with each other. How we can all intermingle with each other. How we can understand that. These pieces are not about me, they're not about you, but they're really about us. The human journey and my hope of love. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gideon. Oh, okay, crap. <laughs> thought that was beautiful and y'all put it very poignantly and now we can go back into the gallery again and now you can discuss the work with her so don't be afraid come up to her talk to her she's not shy she wants to talk about the work so please let's have a fun time thank you all for coming and have a great night <laughs> <laughs>